White in Life with Elizabeth, featuring Del Moore. <laughs> Incident number one in the life of Elizabeth occurred at breakfast one day. Uh, as I remember it, Elizabeth had taken the car downtown the day before. And here it was, breakfast of the next day, and she still hadn't found out a way to tell Alvin that the car was stolen right off the street. Elizabeth, no need to ask you how you feel this morning. You look miserable. <laughs> Have the police found the car yet? Don't you think you'd better tell Alvin somebody stole the car? You want to give the police a little more time to find it, huh? Well, good luck, Elizabeth. Here comes Alvin, and he's not in a very good mood. Look at this thing. Look, Elizabeth, we've got to do something about that paper boy. I'll have him shot at sunrise. <laughs> Look at that paper. It's absolutely soaked. Well, re read the editorials. They'll be dry. You'd think the kid would be satisfied that it's raining outside, but no, he had to make sure. He threw it right in the bird bath. You want some more car? Uh, coffee? The only time he ever got it on the front porch, he broke three bottles of milk. You want some cream in your car? You know I take cream in my car. H how many police? Two. How many police? I, I, I said, how many, please? What's the matter with you this morning, Elizabeth? I guess I'm just a little upset. Well, so am I. The next time that little monster throws a paper in the bird bath, I'm going to steal his bicycle. <laughs> Listen to that hail on the roof. I hope that car starts this morning in this kind of weather. Coffee. Honey, why don't you take the bus? Not on your life. I took it yesterday morning. Mmm. Sugar. Alvin. Hmm? I have a confession to make. Yes, dear. You know that beautiful leather key holder you gave me for Christmas? Yes. Somebody stole it. Oh, get it, honey? I'll get you a new one. Alvin. Hmm? The car keys were in it. Well, it's a lucky thing for us that I happen to have two sets, honey. But I can't imagine why anyone would steal a set of car keys. Hmm. Alvin. Hmm? The keys were in the glove compartment. Well, forget it. Anything else lost? The glove compartment. Well, I'm not even thinking of it. You don't know what a relief it is to get that off. Honey. Honey, don't look at me like that. How could anyone steal the glove compartment without stealing the car? Well, Alvin, I drove downtown yesterday, and I, and I parked the car near your office, and I, I guess I must have left the keys in the car, because when I came back, the, the car was gone. I called the police, and I, I tried to call you, but you'd gone home, and, and that's why I was late for dinner, and, 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 and those are the keys. How <laughs> these are the keys. I hope now, Elizabeth, that you've learned your lesson. You see, Elizabeth, I've told you 12,000 times, never leave the keys in the car. So when I saw our car downtown with the keys in it, I just simply drove it home. <laughs> you drove our car home? Mm-hmm. It's out in the garage right now? That's right. And I called the police and everything. <laughs> it's quite funny when you stop to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> and to think I suffered all night and, and this morning. You should have seen your face just now. <laughs> <laughs> and all this business with the cups. And <laughs> it was really a scream. <laughs> <laughs> and the splitting headache because of no sleep. <laughs> Elizabeth, I like that laugh. Elizabeth, that's your dangerous laugh. I recognize that laugh, honey. No, no Alvin, it's very funny. The way you almost let me have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> Uh, it isn't very many men who steal their own cars just to teach their wives a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll never leave the keys in the car again. That's one thing I taught you. Oh, look at the time, honey. I've got to fix go. you. Oh, no, you won't. Because I shall leave you at this point, Elizabeth. Goodbye. <laughs> uh. Your 
to get picked up by the police. I don't believe you. Goodbye. Albert! How do you do? Hello, officer. Did you report a stolen car, license number 7X1717? Don't tell me you found it. Yes, ma'am. A nasty-looking character was backing it out of your driveway. Well, imagine you being by at just, just the right time. Well, I happen to be coming by just to pick up a further description on the car. Uh, won't you come in and tell me about it, officer? No, thank you. <laughs> Well, will you stop for a minute and tell this character that I'm your husband? Why the handcuffs? He got smart with me. <laughs> he says he's your husband. <laughs> well, am I your husband? See, see that? Take these things off. Take them off. Come on. <laughs> Elizabeth, aren't you ashamed? <laughs> Sit at number two in the life of Elizabeth occurred during the painting season. You know, the time of year when your wife decides it's time for you to do a little trimming up around the place. Well, in Alvin's case, Elizabeth decided that the patio fence needed touching up. And Alvin was just the little Rembrandt to do the job. Elizabeth, would you bring some lemonade or something, honey? This is tough work. You're right there. Honey? Honey? Fun? Oh, oh, Alvin, I didn't know you were there. Can you stand up? Don't worry whether I can stand up. Check my skull for splinters. Oh, I'm so sorry. I really didn't know you were there. Well, that's a heck of a way to find out. Oh. Now, tell Elizabeth where it hurts. You found it right there. Oh. Careful. W wait a minute. Awful. Here, here's some lemonade. Elizabeth! Here. What good does lemonade on the head do? It quenches your scalp. <laughs> Here, I'm suffering and you tell jokes. Oh, I'm seriously, honey. I thought the ice and the lemonade would make the swelling go down. Swelling? Oh. No, I was right. Yeah. All better. You've really decided that I'm better, have you? Honey, I know when you're really hurt. Except for a few lemon seeds, your head's is as good as new. For well, your edification, my head feels like it's on fire. No wonder. Your eyes are blazing. <laughs> Am I supposed to laugh at that very funny remark? Alvin, you killed me. Here. Any ideas? Now, just drink some more lemonade and sit back and relax before you go back to work. You've really decided that I'm all right, haven't you? I know you're all right. If you were really hurt, I'd have had you in a hospital ward long before this. No, it would have been a private room. You're too cute for wards. <laughs> Both my throbbing head and I can do without your cackling laughter, Elizabeth. Oh, you're just being a baby. All men are babies when it comes to being hurt. Look, in the future, let me decide whether I'm hurt or not. 
I'll pour my own lemonade over my head. Look at this, Alvin. And try to make up. No, look. It says right here in this city, a man's knocked down by a car every five minutes. <laughs> Imagine how he feels. They don't mean one man, they mean a lot of men. All right. Imagine how they feel. <laughs> look, is all of this funny stuff supposed to cheer me up? Well, I'm just trying to show you how well off you are. Now, look here. Here's a fellow that fell off a 60-foot ladder. You don't hear him complaining. No, and I can guess why not. Well, you're wrong. He wasn't even hurt. Why not? Did he have his light fall suit on? <laughs> there is a real funny one. <laughs> you thought you were funny with that one of yours. <laughs> How's the head, honey? Oh, it's killing me. <laughs> your side, dear. Oh. Mm. Just... You want to finish painting mm. the fence now? Wait till, wait till my head stops throbbing, honey. It's going just like this, you know. So... Oh, Alvin. Mm. You should have been a wrestler. You suffer beautifully. <laughs> you could call yourself Anguished Alvin. Mm. Just for that, Elizabeth, I paint no fences today. All right, then I'll paint it myself. Go ahead. Can't you just see the sign? <laughs> Wrestling tonight. Who will vanquish Anguished Alvin? Watch his head throb. <laughs> What's the use? <laughs> now we'll see who can paint it. Alvin? Honey? You didn't have to. <laughs> I'm sure. Heart, now let me see. Take your hand away. Let me. Look. No lemonade, Elizabeth. No lemonade. Huh. No abrasion. No bump. You're all right. Well, I'm glad to hear it. For a minute or two, I thought I was hurt. Well, I'm sure it hurts a little bit, but I'm not worried. No, it's my head. Now you just sit there and relax, and I'll paint the fence. Paint the fence. Alvin. What? <laughs> Did you catch him when he was a long, big trailer truck? That guy had a big club in his hand when he came. Oh, now, let me see. <laughs> well, what are you crying about? I'm the one that got hit. Look at it. This time it hurts. Really? Oh. Yeah, now, you poor baby. Elizabeth will take you to the doctor. Well, does it hurt much? I mean, it's bad. Well, it's a little bumpy, but the doctor will fix it up all right. Am I hurt bad enough to stay home from work, do you think? Yes, but the doctor will put your head in a sling, and then you, we'll have a deep little nap. That's quite kind of work. Next time you put the fence. Right. Incident number three in the life of Elizabeth involved an important real estate deal. It seems that Alvin and his friend Richard had purchased a mountain cabin together, the cabin to be shared by both families. However, there was just one problem, how to break the news to Elizabeth. Come in. Hey, Alvin, I got the deed to the cabin. Look at that, it's all ours. Boy, oh boy, a mountain cat. Sit down, Richard. What's the matter, Alvin? Look, Richard, we've got to figure a way to break the news to Elizabeth. Well, gee, that's just easy. Just tell her that you and I bought this cabin and she and Geraldine can fix it up. What's wrong with that? Oh, you don't know Elizabeth. She'll say I should have consulted her before I spent the money. Well, after all, Alvin, a man has some right. And how did you break the news to Geraldine? Oh, Geraldine? Oh, I haven't told her yet. Look, if we can just put Elizabeth in a good mood, maybe we can get away with it. We had some... Wait a minute. What? See, I've got an idea. Here, here, you write this down. Come on, write it down. Why? Look, we've got to do this thing scientifically. Now, when Elizabeth walks in, you say, Hello, Elizabeth. Well, I'd say that anyway. Well, you can't take any chances. Write it down. 
Now, the first thing you say is, hello, Elizabeth, and she'll say, hello, Richard. And then you say, my, that's a pretty dress you're wearing. And she'll say, well, thank you. I think you're pretty, too. <laughs> okay, I got it. Now, and then you say, that's just the kind of dress to wear out in the mountains. And she'll say, why bother with the mountains? I can wear it out at home. <laughs> How do you know she'll say all of that? Because I happen to know Elizabeth. Hello, and when we say that, or rather when she says that, we both bust out laughing. That'll put her in a good mood. Oh, and then we tell her about the cabin. Right. Now, have you got all that down? Yeah, first uh, I say, hello, Elizabeth. And then I say, uh, that's a pretty dress you're wearing. Yeah. And she says, I think you're pretty, too. That's right. And then you say, that's just the kind of dress to wear out in the mountains. And she says, why bother with the mountains? I, I can, can wear, wear it out, out at, at home. home. That's perfect. And then we both bust out laughing. Yeah. Let's rehearse this. OK. Uh, I say, uh, hello, Elizabeth. No, I don't like that. Maybe we better do it this way. Hello, Elizabeth. Was there any difference? Sound here she comes, here she comes. Don't forget now. Well, I didn't know we had company. Oh. You two look like a couple of conspirators. Hello, sweetheart. Oh, what a day. Honestly, you should see the traffic. They have to do something about this parking problem. She's talking too much, Alvin. <laughs> yes, sir, I will. Come on, sit down, Richard. Tell me about Geraldine. Gee, seems like I haven't seen her in ages. Matter of fact, I haven't seen her since the day we ran into each other on 8th Street. We had a nice chat, too, while they <laughs> turned the cars away. Hello, Elizabeth. Hello, Elizabeth? That sure is a pretty dress you're wearing. Did you say hello, Elizabeth? Well, yes, but you... Hello, Richard. <laughs> hello? Well, how are you two getting along? Well, I'll let you know as soon as we're through saying hello. You're giving all the wrong answers, Alvin. Alvin, can I talk to you about your friend? Sure. Oh, that's a mighty pretty dress you're wearing, Elizabeth. Well, thank you. You've seen this. Say, that is a pretty dress. Well, thank you. Oh, uh, I like that dress. You do? Yes, sir, when it comes to dresses, that sure is one. All right, what's going on here? Elizabeth, when we say you have a pretty dress, the least you can do is say we're pretty, too. Why? Why don't we start all over again, Alvin? Never mind, she's ruined the whole thing. Just forget it. Let's start all over, Richard. I'll never sleep until I know what this is all about. And I warn you, it better be good. She's not in a very good mood, Alvin. Now, wait a minute. Now, when we get to the joke part, laugh it up. Come in. I haven't knocked yet. Well, knock. <laughs> Stubborn as a mule. Do we have to go through all the hellos again? No, just one. Uh, hello, Elizabeth. Hello, Richard. That sure is a pretty dress you're wearing. Thank you. I think you're pretty stupid, too. <laughs> we are. Elizabeth, you don't have to be nasty about it. Sorry, I think you're pretty, too. <clears throat> That's just the kind of a dress to wear out in the mountains. It is not. Elizabeth, you're supposed to say, why bother with the mountains? I can wear it out at home. Why bother with the mountains? I can wear it out at home. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a funny... <laughs> I'll call a doctor. Oh, now, wait. Look, now, just a minute. We can now that she's in a good mood, we can tell her about the mountain cabin. <laughs> Gentlemen, should we sit, sit down? Sit down. <clears throat> I'll admit that up to now, this conversation has been just a little bit muddled. But I'm happy to be able to say that so far the logic of it has escaped me entirely. What's she talking about, Alvin? <laughs> Let me put it another way. I like the straightforward way you dodge the issue. Maybe you'd better put it another way. I still don't know what you're talking about. All right, what's all this about? Elizabeth, we're going to put our cards on the table. What cards, Alvin? <laughs> Elizabeth, what would you say to a mountain cabin? 
Nothing, unless it spoke first. Now who's being illogical? Well, what do you expect? I come home and you two idiots greet me with... <laughs> Hello, Elizabeth. Hi, that's a nice dress, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, please. Well, the least you can do is tell us we're pretty, too. I... Does she get like this very often? Married out at home, you can marry out at home. Well, let me stop this. Elizabeth, Richard and I bought a mountain cabin. Richard and I bought a... a... <laughs> How much? $350. Is that all? Uh, show her the picture. Show her the picture. Yes, yeah, right here. Uh, this is the living room, see? Oh, no, that's my thumb. <laughs> here you are, honey, see? The living room. Oh, Alvin, it's beautiful. She likes it. Well, I told you she would. Look, honey, here's the fireplace right there. Why didn't you tell me? You know those old curtains we had in the den? They can hang right over that window. It says the room's 12 by 14. It's big, huh? Alvin, measure 12 feet from that wall, will you, okay. honey? Richard, you measure 14 feet from over there. I'll over measure here? from over here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hello, Elizabeth. Look, let's not start that again. Never mind, Richard. You go on measuring. Nine, ten. Honey, your friend is a pretty dim bulb. Yeah, I know. Well, you're not really mad at us because we bought the cabin, are you? Mad? Are you kidding? I think it's a wonderful idea. <laughs> it's pretty. Anytime you can get a cabin for three hundred and fifty dollars. Hundred and three. Richard. It's a hundred and seven feet to my car. There's a real bulletin. <laughs> Never mind, honey. I'm so excited about the cabin, I don't care about anything. Is it near a lake? Well, we forgot to ask. Well, what mountains is it in? Mountains? Well, well what difference does it make? Mountains are mountains. <laughs> Gentlemen, let's sit down. Come on. Are you sure you didn't buy a cabin in the Himalayas? Oh, no, it's in the mountains. <laughs> Elizabeth, you don't have to be sarcastic. Show her the deed. Yeah, here. There's the deed right there. What's the matter? Is it in the Himalayas? No. We do own a mountain cabin, don't we? Yes. Well, where is it? On a lot on 14th Street. <laughs> hey, that's valuable property. You don't own the property. You just own the cabin. See, we better get her in a good mood again. Hello, Elizabeth. <laughs> the cabin has to be moved. Why? Well, the people who own the property are charging you rent starting tomorrow. Hello, Elizabeth. Hi, Elizabeth. Hello. Honestly, any one of you by yourselves is bad enough, but the two of you together, I can't Well, it was his fault. He told me it wasn't really my fault. I didn't get you told it, Geraldine. I didn't like Say goodbye to the people. Goodbye, everybody. Honey, I really think that's the people who got it.